<laughs> no. Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name's Mark and I'm joined here by Scout, our youngest cat. Today I'm joining you for a Wednesday Unwind and I'm going to talk about friendship. I'm going to talk about what it means to have people in your life who get you, people you really love, and people you feel so lucky to know. So <laughs> stick around for some of that and of course some yarn, fiber, everything else. Let's get into it. So I'll start the ball rolling with um, a cat that I'm very thankful for. This is Scout. You've probably seen him before if you've come to my channel. And um, he's a young cat. He's turning one. He's turning one really as this video is being posted. It's his birthday. He is a precious little cat. Um, he's adorable. I hope you can tell. Can you show everybody how cute you are? Can you see this adorable boy? He's really sweet. He's um, a plump little guy. He's the softest kitty cat. He's very affectionate and um, just a good cat to have. Good, playful, sweet guy. And he gets along really well with our other two cats, Big Cat and Gus, the orange cat. So that's starting the ball rolling. Um, today, let me show you what I'm winding. I'm winding some yarn for a project. I'm not revealing what the project is because it's a gift for someone. It's a surprise. And so they might watch these videos. I'm just going to show the yarn and later I'll reveal the project. So I have a skein here of wool stock. It's a worsted weight wool, 100% non-superwash wool. And this is a 150 gram skein or hank. And the color is 1300 cast iron. I really, really love wool stock. I've talked about wool stock before. One of my favorite yarns. When I can, I love working with a non superwash yarn because it holds its shape so well. It shows stitch definition really well, and it also can do magical things like it can become felted if you need, if you're felting something like a bag or a shoe or a hat. And in my case, when I like to steek things, when I like to do color work, when I like to make a cardigan in the round and then cut it open or do my color work all on the right side, later cut the, the armholes open, cut the neck opening, whatever I need, it's really cool that non-superwash wool can do those things so easily. So this looks very plain. It's just a charcoal gray, but uh, it's a great wool. Feels good. It's not rough. Um, it's got the slightest bit of toothiness to it. It's not as soft as um, a merino wool, a superwash wool, or an alpaca cashmere, something like that. But it's not rough. It's not rough and scratchy. So for people out there who sometimes ask me about non-superwash wools, what do I recommend? I love wool stock. Wool stock comes in a worsted weight, also in a fingering weight. Um, with the same range of colors. So again, this is not a terribly exciting color to show you, but they have a beautiful range of colors. Um, I've got some of them behind me and my yarn scraps. I've made a lot of projects out of this line of yarn. So I'm winding this today. And as I mentioned, I wanted to talk about friendship and what it's like to have those people in your life who really make life worth living. It feels, um, feels right for me to say that. And as usual, I haven't planned out exactly what I'll say here, but I just wanted to muse. I wanted to share some of these things. And for those of you who joined me in this video, hopefully this will help you pass the time as you're crafting or resting, cleaning, whatever you're doing. So I'm really lucky to have a best friend, someone who's been a best friend in my life for more than 10 years now, probably closer to 15 years. And we met in college. We met when I went off to study at university when I was 18. And this best friend is Teresa. I've talked about her a little bit in some other videos, but I'll pop a picture of the two of us up. And 
we really get each other. We really run on almost the exact same wavelength. It's kind of incredible the way we'll be together and we will say the exact same thing at the, at the exact same time, or we'll start to sing the exact same thing at the exact same time. She's usually in the right key and I'm in the wrong key, but still we'll start doing this at the same time as each other. And um, it's fun, it's special. We have a really close bond and we were lucky to get to go to school together um, for college. And since then we haven't lived in the same place. So we've been separated um, kind of across the country for several years now, for about nine or 10 years but we've been able to keep up, um, visit each other, plan, plan reasons to get together and keep that friendship alive. But of course, if you have a friend that you've been um, in that sort of relationship with for a long time, you know how hard it can be. You know how things shift, how people grow, people change, and your life fills up and it becomes so difficult. It feels so difficult at least to invest in a friendship sometimes and just keep it alive. So for many years, that's how my friendships worked. I would be close with people when I was with them. So if it, if it was a classmate or someone that I'm in a show with, a musical, an opera, and we're spending a lot of time together, you feel that you become so close, maybe you become best friends or at least lifelong friends. But then when that's over, and you've moved on to a different job or a different position, you live somewhere else, oftentimes those friendships fizzle out. And I think that's okay. I think it makes sense that oftentimes you are close with people because physically they are close. They're the people you're working side by side with or the people you live with, the people that share your interest at the time. Um, but then of course you have relationships and friendships that last decades that last your whole life if you're lucky. And um, I could cry just thinking about it. <laughs> I hope that my friendship um, with Teresa will last my whole life. And I, I'm excited to see all the things, all the crazy things we'll get to do in the future. So I don't want to just go on and on and on, but it was on my mind. <laughs> so um, a little bit of a story Teresa was with my husband and me this past weekend, and we did all sorts of things. Um, we saw a show, we went to a summer theater production at the Blossom, I don't know what it's called, the Blossom Music Center um, in Ohio, part of the Cleveland Orchestra where they perform and, and have shows. So we saw a production of Jesus Christ Superstar, which was pretty fun. I had never seen the show. I knew some of the music, but I hadn't seen it before. And so we went to see that um, one evening, which was fun, sort of summer amphitheater situation. And we did all sorts of things. We sang in the church choir together Sunday morning. We had some nice meals and we were able to go to one of the beaches um, here in Cleveland. And I have some footage, some pictures that I'll put up as I'm talking about all of this. And um, one item of note <laughs> is that in the growing of this channel in my experience that I feel I'm gaining making videos and editing and understanding, you know, how to put these things together. One goal I've given myself is to elevate the beauty, elevate the nuance of some of these videos. I'm not really showing any of that in this video. So if you're looking for the beauty and nuance and can't find it, I'm exactly there with you. But in future videos, when I'm uh, sharing a finished project or I'm talking about um, a trip or somewhere that I was able to travel, I want to try to have some really beautiful special footage that I can share that makes it feel even more like you're there with me, that you're experiencing some of these things that I want to share. So <laughs> in, in that goal, in that plan, I bought a drone. And I've said before, I'm not a very techie or tech friendly person. So I know there will be some hurdles with learning how to operate this and um, really make the most of it. But I bought a drone, a you know, flying object with a camera in it that I can control and get footage of wherever I am. So it doesn't make sense that I would use it all the time, but especially when I travel, when I'm somewhere really picturesque, when I'm out in nature, when I'm hiking, when I'm 
near water and there's a lot of open air, um, I plan to use this and get some clips that I can put into these videos just to expand what's going on, expand my storytelling, expand the projects I'm sharing. So we tried out this drone. So <laughs> here's where the fun starts. I'm going to start putting some footage over this part of the video and you'll see Ned, my husband, you'll see Teresa, and you'll see me. <laughs> and um, for the most part, things were really successful. Uh, pretty easy to fly. It felt like I was just using a toy, like driving a remote control car, except it's flying in the air. And um, I don't think it's terribly dangerous. It's very lightweight. It's, it's all made of plastic, but it feels intense. It feels a little bit spooky. So we're trying to fly the drone. We practiced first in a field uh, near our house, and that was pretty good. It was pretty straightforward. I was able to practice taking off and landing. And then, as I mentioned, we went to the beach. So I thought it would be a great idea <laughs> to try to fly it at the beach. And it worked, and I think it is beautiful. I hope that you'll find some of this footage to be um, I don't know, exciting to see. <laughs> and so I'm flying the drone at the beach and um, getting the hang of it, but it's very nervous um, to have this just floating over the water where it could drop at any point, the battery could die, I could lose connection with it. I don't know, I don't know how it really works. So um, for the most part successful, but you will see a clip here where I was attempting to land it and I said to Teresa, oh, would you mind recording a clip of me landing the drone because you know why not that would be fun to show and of course as we do that together um i don't know what i did or what i was thinking but i have the drone hovering above the picnic table where we're going to land it and in some crazy stroke of um stupidity i fly the drone as fast as it can go directly into a tree so you'll see that here um you'll hear some of it but I think, I think things survived. Um, I was able to dust some sand off of it and fly it again successfully. Um, so fingers crossed I didn't break it completely. I didn't ruin my new investment. But um, I don't know, just a bit of life, a bit of what would probably happen to most people when they try to do something like this. So now you'll see, I guess, my favorite clips, my favorite drone footage I was able to get while testing it out for the first time. And Ideally, I'll be able to take this along with me for my summer trip, my trip to the UK, and hopefully capture some beautiful footage of um, Scotland, of England, the hikes, the bits of countryside we'll be in. And it's my idea that having some of this footage, having sort of another angle of things will add nuance and elevate what I'm doing. So if you know um, a lot about drones or you have tips and suggestions about the best kind of things I should capture, let me know. And um, I'll make sure to try to do that for the filming that happens on the trip. So back to the yarn. Here is my 150 gram cake of wool stock, worsted weight. It's beautiful stuff. I love this yarn. Um, I just love working with it. It's so squishy. It blocks out beautifully. It feels good in your hands. It feels good in my hands. I guess I can't speak for you, but to me, I love it. And I think it's a decent price point if you're interested in 100% wool and an un a less treated, I should say, non-superwash wool. I think it's um, I think it's a steal. I think it's a good price. So I'm gonna grab a couple colors that I have on my wall that I like and just show you the range of things. So give me a second to get that set up. Okay, I'm gonna pull these from my scraps jar. This is the worsted weight jar of scraps or vase of scraps. And not all of these are wool stock, but I will fish out the ones that are, just to show you some of my favorites. So the red and orange, these are both wool stock. This sunny, sunny yellow this, which is not black, but um, I think they call it Midnight Sea. It's really beautiful 
deep blue, sort of black blue with a little purple and green in it. There's this to go along with the yellow. It's fun. A lot of their colors have sort of a lighter and darker cousin or brother. I just think it's pretty, pretty stuff. This one's interesting. It's sort of a neutral, but it's got um, a lot of, oh my goodness, come on. A lot of pinks, purples to it, a little bit of like orange in there. One of my all time favorite colors is this green. It's called Wild Time, T-H-Y-M-E. And I just love the dimension of that green. I think it's so pretty. A nice sort of icy blue. I just think they're nice colors. They have this cranberry, and then there's a color I don't think I own that um, I want to use for a sweater. I talked about it in a video a couple months ago, and I, I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to purchase it, and it's even deeper than this cranberry color. Really pretty, and I think it'll work well for the project I'm imagining. Then there's a good um, sort of white cream base. Um, this is another color. I think this is called Gravel Road. There are a couple, a couple different neutrals they have. Some that are... I couldn't remember the word I was going to say. <laughs> a couple different neutrals. There's um, the cream. There's like an oatmeal, a lighter oatmeal. There's the Gravel Road, which is like a... I think of it still as sort of an oatmeal, just darker. And then a lot of blues. There's a really true blue that looks sort of like blue jeans or denim. And then there's this blue that's got a little more teal to it. Um, again, the dark midnight sea, the shades of red, yellow, orange. I just think they're pretty. I think they're really pretty shades and they're great to work with. So a little more um, wool stock to show you. I imagine this has ended up being a fairly short video, but if you've been here before, you'll know these Wednesday unwinds are just that. It's a chance to come together, um, hopefully decompress a little bit. Typically I'm winding yarn or I'm starting a project or musing on an idea, and I hope that you find this time um, as a chance for you to do the same, for you to get a little bit of your own goals, with your own work, whatever it is done, or just a chance to decompress. So I'm glad if you're here that you've chosen to be here with me. And um, I hope that you have something that you want to tell me in the comments. I hope that you have some stories of a best friend or a relationship that has been important to you that you'd like to share. And if you're not comfortable sharing in the comments, you're always welcome to send me an email at makermarknits, makermarknits at gmail.com. You are welcome to write to me. I have a P.O. box. I'll put that um, on the screen as well. And um, I'm just happy to know you. I'm happy that we can form a friendship here and a community here. And I'm really excited to grow that, to know more about you, to hear more about what you're making, what you like to do. Often that's done through a story or a comment you leave me or um, a message you send me. If you're telling me about the projects you're making, if you're tagging me in something on Instagram or sending me um, just an update of what's going on, I love reading all of that. And even if I don't respond to all of it, I am reading all of it and it means a lot to me. So thank you for doing that. Keep it coming. <laughs> talking about writing, talking to each other. I'm about to sit down and write my postcards that go out to my big cat sponsors over on Patreon. If that's something you're interested in finding more about, you can find my Patreon page through the links in the video description box below. And I'm really grateful to all of those Patreon supporters for allowing me the chance to sit down and invest in making these videos and um, building this channel. So I'm excited to see what will come in the future. And it's thanks to people like that, to um, people like that who give me so much support. So thank you. You know who you are. <laughs> and your names are always at the end of these videos too. So everybody knows who you are. I think that's all I've got to say. Um, I really appreciate you being here. 
um, let me know your stories. Let me know, know what's going on with your projects, um, what's going on in life. Thanks for being here. Happy crafting, happy knitting, happy crocheting to you. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.